Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and very welcome to Dynatrace Lab Vienna office opening. My name is Daniel Vicevic. I'm the founder of Broadcasten, one of the leading innovation and startup platforms in the German-speaking area. And it's my big pleasure to be here tonight to be able to host the upcoming panel on the topic, Why Physical Spaces Matter. Dynatrace is a very impressive company. They opened this space today, and I just listened to the founder a few minutes ago and had goosebumps because this is one of the world market leaders uh, in software intelligence from Austria, um, and it's really impressive what they have, were able to achieve. And being that, they have fascinating office here in Vienna, newly opened, a lot of space, super digital company with a lot of physical analog space, and that's why we're going to discuss this topic of why physical spaces matter, and we have an excellent panel on that subject. Dietmar Böckmann, Erste Bank, Managing Director of Erste Digital and IT Optimist. It's very important to stress out you have 2,000 employees, 48 nations, three different um, areas or cities that uh, you are located in, uh, a lot of intelligence for the whole banking group. Very welcome, and it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Then with me, Veronika Leibetzeder from Dynatrace, Senior Director, R&D Lab Operations, and employee experience enthusiast. Veronika, very <laughs> welcome. It's great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Great Last but not least, Gerhard Abel, Planet Architects, the CEO and co-founder, architect himself, and he also was the one designing this office here in Vienna, together, obviously, with Veronika. And I'm very interested in your insights. How do you design a company for a super digital company? And how do you design an office space? Very welcome. Big round of applause for all of them, also in our digital community. <laughs> Um, Dietmar, we were going to start with, uh, let's say, an intro into the office space, but on Tuesday something happened. Erste Bank is one of the front runners in digital banking in Austria. Serious guys, they have excellent products, they compete with the, uh, so to say, newly founded fintechs and banks with their innovation, but on Tuesday your systems um, went off, so to say. They were outraged. What happened and what did that mean for you as one of the most digital businesses in banking sector in Austria? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just came home from Tuesday. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you introduced me as an IT optimist and I lost my, optimist, my optimism, optimism on Tuesday a little bit. But uh, before I come back to your question, I just want to say uh, thanks for the invitation and congratulations to this awesome office. We moved in May very close to this place, but this is really an outstanding uh, architectural piece and a really great view. And I really admire you guys that you work at such a beautiful place. And I was carefully listening when your boss said that he has plans to hire hundreds of new employees. <laughs> As I mentioned, we are neighbors and we should keep a good neighborship, so uh, <laughs> it would be great if you don't hire them from us. <laughs> Coming back to your question, uh, Tuesday was really a nightmare and my worst day in the office ever since and for many of my colleagues, uh, but of course also for many of our customers. We couldn't provide them the experience they should have. Uh, our system in Austria had more or less a complete outage and was not available for around 10 hours. Uh, so there was a huge impact, uh, as you can imagine. And around noon, the situation improved uh, in terms that we exactly knew where the issue was and could start to fix it. Uh, I have to say, and I want to say it, uh, it was also the press release, it was for sure no hacking attack, no customer data was lost. We exactly know where the bug or where the issue was. I cannot disclose any details uh, on this because we do not want to spread around uh, with whom we are partnering uh, in this sensitive area. However, we fixed it in the afternoon and then we really started to recover all of our systems which also took a while because we were aware that really thousands or hundreds of thousands of people through, the, through to this uh, press text and all of the uh, social media awareness that they, will, that they will all try then to, to log into George. Hmm. And it was very well that we did it this way. 
uh, because after we went online again, we had the absolute maximum peak in log on, or logins to our uh, George environment. And of course, we did everything to prevent the situation where our system were overloaded and we need to go offline again. Uh, but luckily, this was working well. Uh, maybe to bridge to this conversation, uh, it could have been much worse if the outage would have been one year ago in the corona pandemic, in the peak of the pandemic where everybody was in home office. Uh, as I mentioned, we are quite close to this place and we had all of the relevant engineers in one command center, around 50 people were working to resolve the issue. Physically. Physically together in two big command centers. Uh, happy maybe for the Dynatrace guys. We also had many monitors with Dynatrace uh, logging and tracing information around, uh, which helped also a lot, uh, but it, it I cannot imagine, I was there the whole day, and I cannot imagine how this would have, be, we could have managed it in a home office situation with all the engineers at home. So we were glad that we can come back to the office that we all sat together with the crisis communication, with the external communication, and of course, all of the engineers who finally uh, made it possible that we could get back to business. That's a very interesting learning. Are you going to take any measures to embrace even more so uh, this physical presence of your employees after experiencing the benefit of being together in the critical moment? So currently we, uh, we invite our colleagues to come back 40% of their time a month. Uh, I'm a big fan of on-site, of being together to to run into each other, how did you say it? Punch, pump, 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 pump into, into each, each other. other. I think this is a great, uh, a great phrase, uh, and we will for sure evaluate if it's now the right moment that more people are coming back to office. Let's let's stick to pump into each other, Veronica, because this is fascinating for for me. A year ago, we were guessing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Our digital companies going to return ever to their work. Zoom was functioning. Uh, efficiency was there there were some kind of means of informal communication. One had coffee uh, meetings on Zoom and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, first of all, you start, you, you, you have this fascinating 24th floor. I'm, I'm not sure I'm, am I allowed to say that there are more floors coming? Yeah, so it's the 22nd floor here. Yeah. Um, and we're going to add three more floors in the building next door. Yeah. In Basically, it's the Tower 17, the Bavak Tower, and we are um, renting the three top floors there and also build it out in a scenario like this. Why? Why are you doing that? So as you mentioned, bumping into each other is really key because when we actually uh, found this place and, and we started to, to plan this space, it was in April 2020, right when the pandemic hit. Um, and we truly believe that our core culture and bumping into each other is, and, and bringing people together, fueling innovation, is what we need as a company. Um, when we talked before, they, and you mentioned it's in the DNA of an IT company that you can work fully remote. It definitely is not. Because um, our DNA is built on culture, it is built on trust, it is built on teamwork, and this is only possible if you physically meet. So thinking back, um, April 2020, most of the digital company or everybody moved into into home office and you could clearly see a peak in productivity because people actually had time to work off all their to do's and all their tasks but it was so visible that was missing was the innovation because three four five months afterwards the to do's and 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 the tasks they were they were getting way less but the innovation was missing and you could clearly feel how people were striving, coming back again, coming back together, working together and bump back again into each other. To collaborate together. To collaborate, exactly. To push innovation. And you know, we had our video team uh, in the morning here with you and then my colleague was sending me WhatsApp photos. Wow, it was such a cool office, such a cool office, such a cool office. She was totally excited. But obviously it's great here and it looks super nice. But what were... What was your briefing, so to say? What, what was important? Not only nice furniture. I think every piece of furniture, every design here has a meaning in terms of what does it bring, what service does it serve to the employees? Yeah. 
So it's like the Dynatrace culture, the Dynatrace employees, they are unique. So are our offices unique. And when we send the briefing to, to Planet Architects on what was important to us, there was, I, 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 I clearly remember there was this mind map having this big bubble in the middle saying bumping into each other. We've sent it to many uh, architectural companies um, and got a lot of feedback or just like random standardized office furniture from the shelf, from the hook. Um, but when we came to Gerhard Abel and Planet Architects, those were the ones who really um, first understood our need and asked, not just presented us what we could have, they asked us, um, or they actually tried to find out our needs and, and what can be trend and how can we transfer those needs into a brand new building that at this point even didn't exist yet. So this was when we came to Gerhard Abel and, and Planet Architects and how they understood the way we work because this was what actually connected us. I will come back to this because I find it fascinating and I, want, I personally want to learn from you and hopefully our audience as well in terms of what you really did. But first, Gerhard, to you. Um, how is it to actually build or design a physical space to a digital global market leader in software business? <laughs> do, you, do you first say, wow, what are they asking me? Um, the whole journey started five years ago. And uh, I have to tell you that Dynatrace, the office of Dynatrace in Linz, I had to look twice at the door. I was at the right spot. Um, it wasn't that cool. Yeah. Um, that's so my was. first impression of the market leader, I looked it up because I had no idea what Dynatrace was and what they did. I thought, what, what, what are they doing? And then I spoke to the people there and said, why, why are you working here? And they said, we're, we're, we're friends. We're like friends. I, I've been working here ever since because we're friends. And I thought, uh, okay, that's a good culture they have. And the more people I met, and a lot of them are here right now, some of them I've met you know, many years ago, and it's incredible. They have this amazing culture. And so it's not designing for an IT company. It's really about designing for a culture. For the particular More culture than of an this IT company. company. It doesn't, it, it's not so important what they do in detail. It's more important like how they do it and how they, how they connect so what to what were the other. questions that you were asking, Veronica? What, what was important for you to um, design the perfect office for them? We got this A4 sheet with some you know, scribbles and it had this bump into each other thing in the, right in the middle. Yeah? It also had this, it should be more nerdy, which I didn't understand. So <laughs> <laughs> it had sports, it had lots of things. So you designed uh, the li library then. And I, I still have that <laughs> sketch on my tablet and I try to make sense of this whole thing and I colored it in different colors and formed groups. And this bumping is, is really interesting because we come, our background is not sort of a classical architect's office and we're, we're not at all specialized in offices, not at all. And this was an advantage because we, we do you know, urban design and we do product design. Mm -hmm. So we, we think in a, in a sort of more broader way. And uh, Did you I, see this office as a product that you need to design with no, somebody? No, I see it more as a city okay. on the other end of the scale. Because if you think, and also it's about the future, because you're designing something for a future which is literally unknown. Even if people tell you where it's going and, you know, uh, you don't know. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be there for a long time. So we had this approach much like a city. A city, like we see outside, is, is a structure that's been here for thousands of years, still works. Why is that so? Because the infrastructure is right. Because it's constantly being adapted, constantly being changed. And there's quality space. There are quality spaces, quality, good connections, good infrastructure. And there is the identity of the people. Yeah. And this was our first concept for Dynatrace. It was called Spaces, Connections, Identities. Mm. Had no building at all. It was literally just telling them, look, these are the components that we need to take care of. So that it fulfills the culture. Veronica, um, as a digital global leader, yeah? I, I guess you use a user-centric approach when developing digital products. Was that similar to designing your office? Did you include your employees? Um, did you have this customer-centric approach in developing yeah. this? So in the whole development, the employees were our customers. Yeah. And it was a pure HR approach. So um, when we 
even the mood board or, or I sent to, to Gerhard was, was drafted together with a team of several people. But when we then got further into the design phase and we knew the building that we're going to rent and implement this concept, there was a participation group where from each uh, team an employee was sent to representing this team and giving us guidance on what their needs as a team are or what their need as a team is. And then we took this feedback, designed the feedback into the plans, played it on the one hand back to also the management team, show them, okay, this is our scenario, this is how we think the office should work, how teams should interact, what spaces, what collaboration bases are needed, but they also took it and sent it back to their team. So it was a pure HR process. And I clearly remember this, these days, I think every time we met, it, it was so agile that we even, during several meetings, we just found out, okay, we need to change that, we need to change that. Team setups changed. The way we worked changed. All of a sudden we had to implement squad rooms because we started <laughs> working in squads. Um, but the concept allowed it. The concept was so flexible that it allowed it. And this is what Gerhard mentioned. This is why our office spaces are so unique, because they are adaptive. And, and it wasn't designed top down. It was designed as far as understood. Bottom, bottom up. up, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like a software, right? like a software product. Yeah. And, and this is why also all, like, there is a certain DNA going through all the labs. We started with the big, or we started the design phase with the big headquarter in Linz. But until the headquarter was delivered, there was a, a lab opened in Klagenfurt, a second lab opened in Linz, there was a lab open in Graz. So we all those learning, we were able to implement them in these labs, but learn from them and redo it and do it better and better the next time and, and actually let them grow with us. So, for example, looking now at the youngest one in Vienna, lots of learnings from the way we work, how we interact, how we collaborate, could have uh, could already been implemented here in the Vienna lab. And so do those labs, and as we redo them, evolve with the way we work. You call it lab on purpose? You don't call it office? We call it lab because it's mostly engineering people working in our offices, and this is why we particularly call it labs, yeah? To emphasize this atmosphere of collaboration even more in the, ter in the terminology. Exactly, yeah. Um, Dietmar, you have 2,000 employees. Uh, the internal merger took place in July this year, so uh, that's a kind of a big step. What is your experience? Does it work in the IT? Do you need space? You obviously mentioned your crisis on, on Tuesday and uh, emphasized how important it was that your crew was there. Apart from that, what is your kind of take on, 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 on space versus digital collaboration? So we merged two companies on the 1st of July and of course it was also not optimal to have this kind of big merger to 2,000 colleagues in the pandemic. Of course, we would have much more appreciated getting the people more together. And now over the summer, we really used the time to make many team events and also to bridge the different cultures uh, and come closer together. I'm a big fan of modern offices. Why? I was working in a really poor office <laughs> before me. So uh, parts of the IT guys were working Close, also close here, Geiselbergstraße, which is really not a too beautiful uh, area in Vienna. And we were really jealous uh, to the Erste Bank because they uh, were already in the beautiful campus building. Uh, they moved in there in 2016. So we were really jealous, uh, jealous and I was really pushing that also the engineers can move towards campus. Uh, it was more complicated or more tricky than I thought because we had a big data center in our cellar uh, and it was not only moving office spaces but also getting rid of a big data center. But finally we did it. Uh, we did all of our plannings before the pandemic. So we rented uh, a tower like this one with uh, also tw more than 20 floors. Uh, we decided then to cut half of it, so we reduced it down to, to seven, more than half of it, we reduced it down to seven floors. 
uh, and many of our engineers directly moved into the Erste campus. And this is what I was fighting for, what I really like, because the engineers, they should sit as close to the business guys as possible. They should get their, uh, all of their passion, their know-how into the product development. They need a strong voice. And this can be started if the people are sitting together. And I'm really proud, and many of the colleagues are happy that we now finally have a great office. That's a very good point. Let me stick to that because um, you are moving sort of IT more to the core business and in the traditional corporate world, one hears often, well, the IT is one silo and the rest of the company is the other silo. Does that um, kind of stop down innovating together? Does that, is that an obstacle, so to say, when you want to develop new business models, new digital products and so on and so forth? How do you position yourself? So we definitely position ourselves that we are enabling the bank for the next steps. Uh, many of the recent innovations came out of IT. It is impossible to run a bank without IT. We all saw it on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> that uh, IT is the heart of a bank and that's where the engineer should be, as close as to the bank as possible, that the voice are heard and that they can bring in the ideas what IT and technology can deliver values for our customers. How did you design your office? Are there departments, marketing and sales and uh, development and how does it work in Dynatrace? We do have our teams together um, on certain floors, but like the core point was bringing in zones, collaboration zones, bumping, in, bumping into each other zones where you cross department meet on, an, uh, on a random basis and, and really strive innovation and, and collaboration. Trying to enable the best experience to each and every individual employee. Um, I guess you were not able to do that alone because Dynatrace is a very big company. What, play, what role does the leadership um, sort of play in this implementing new office and culture uh, concepts? Of course, the leadership team is, is super important um, to, to stand behind the concept, but to us, the, the, the learning was that we ha didn't have to convince the leadership team from the way we work, from the way we want to implement this in the offices. The leadership team actually believed that this is the right thing. And this is also why I think the Dynatrace culture is so unique, so unique because we, we also believe it bottom up and top down. And, and this is why we don't have to convince leadership, the leadership team, for example, from employee experience. It's actually expected from us to deliver perfect employee experience from the leadership team. And this is where many companies out there struggle with because they have to convince their CEOs um, or C-level that actually employees matter. Dynatrace is different here, definitely. Gerhard, um, I know architects who are not all too happy when their customers give them some advice and give them very particular uh, opinions and, 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 and wishes. Um, how did you cope with that, so to say, to develop something together without telling them what they should do? <laughs> that's, that's funny, yeah. We're often told that, hey, guys, y you guys are architects. It can't be, you know, you're not wearing black. <laughs> and, and we don't have to follow what you say. No, it's, it's, our approach is different, and, and you were mentioning it before that I designed this office. No, I did not. Uh, I, I co-designed. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, team involved there here. Maybe you can make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's teamwork. It's literally teamwork. And it's not just our team, it's the, it's the Dynatrace team. And those two teams, you know, bringing those two teams together, that's really, the, that's really how it works. It's a back and forth process. It really is. And, and I, I truly believe that design is teamwork. Mm -hmm. It's big teamwork. And uh, we, sometimes we tell our clients, not Dynatrace, because they, you know, they are really <laughs> engaged in, in, in design. Uh, we always tell them, you know, the design is going to be good if the client's good. And they think, well, why? You know, we hired you. You're the architect. You do some magic tricks. You pull the bunny out of the cylinder. I said, no, we do not. We, we, we work together and we, we work something out. And the more you engage, you know, the, the better it, the outcome is going to be. Because then the more we know what, what you need. 
Veronica is now some, I don't know, founders or some other managers are thinking, wow, I'd also like to develop my office customer-centric with our employees. Give us some hard facts. How long does it take? Is it painful? Where are the pitfalls? <laughs> uh, what, what can go wrong? What, what are your learnings from that? Yeah? So, How uh, do you start? <laughs> How do you start? Start with a piece of paper and I, I mean the core is your culture. If you want your office to rep represent authentic authenticity, you, it needs to reflect your culture. So bring your culture, your authentic culture to a piece of paper and start designing from there. And with that, also evolve your employees. Ask for their needs, how they think about it, challenge it. And yes, there were many, there was a lot of pushback actually during the whole process. And I could see myself running against some walls when I tried to sell something they weren't too convinced from. Um, but in the end, it really turned out that this was the, the best thing we could do because this is where we got honest feedback. And the feedback was really honest. For example, I, I, I still see myself sitting in a presentation showcasing how opportunities about really purely open space. I just wanted to showcase how it could not look like, but didn't tell it. There was, there was so much pushback and it was like really, okay, from this point, I knew we're not going to talk about that much open space because like developers, they need focus areas. They need a place where they can sit down and do focused and concentrated work. And this actually happens in team offices, collaboration offices, and not in open space offices. Does it also happen at home? Did you include home office as a part of the whole concept? It, it was part of the concept. It was not purely home office, but our concept already included remote collaboration because at this point we have already had teams in Gdansk, we just um, acquired a company in Barcelona, so this partly remote collaboration was already part of the concept phase. So we designed phone booths, we designed areas where you could go with your laptop for a Zoom meeting, but the home office aspect was not that much in place as we have it right now in our conceptual phase. So when I think about the next three floors, the learning definitely we need more Zoom and remote boxes where people can go for an ad hoc Zoom meetings because hybrid work did, or, or home office did come to stay. We are all sure about that. But the setup for the future is going to be a hybrid workplace setup where you need places where people can go for an ad hoc Zoom meeting um, that pops up on their, on their computer. And let's talk about that, because I think we all need to learn about how to organize hybrid work. We, I, at least for ourselves, we don't have the solutions yet, but we have some hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Dietmar mentioned you have 40%, uh, 40, 60% rule, 40% in office, 60% at home. Is that correct? Correct. Is that important to set these kind of rules? Or wh and why? Uh, we got the feedback from many teams that they appreciated some kind of guidelines. Uh, and we are not monitoring it, we are not controlling it or other stuff. We just say it would be great if you are around 40% of your time a month and the teams can decide if they want to be one week here or two days a week here. So our room concept is flexible enough to cover this. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I think it's important that the people are coming back. Uh, Erste Digital, like Dynatrace, we are a people-centric company. Uh, our software is developed by engineers. The problems are resolved by engineers. The products are coded by people, not by robots or machines. And it's just important to get the people together to work together on, on different kind of activities. Excellent. Do you have any experience on framework rules? Do you need that? Um, we definitely, at this point, also still have more questions than answers, but we do have some rule sets in place um, that we're going to implement once we really know the pandemic is, is, is over or under control, let's call it that way. Um, and our scenario will look like that we have the opportunity to work up to three days per week from home and um, have uh, basically two days per week being present in the office. But as, as I mentioned, Dynatrace is so agile, we also live this, this process in an agile way. If we develop that this doesn't match to our culture or what we, yeah. need, we need to adapt, we're going to adapt. I think the most important thing is, and this is what's so great that the pandemic learned us, is the trust in the people. Yeah. Um, you trust your people, give them guidance, give them a framework where they can 
act or they can work, but don't set them clear rules and, and put them in a corner where they cannot escape anymore. I think this is one of the biggest recipes um, that I can tell for what's coming after, after COVID. Um, but trust is also something that's built in personal relationships, and this is why we truly believe that collaborating in person is so important to us because we also have a culture of trust and we want to continue having this culture. We don't want to lose it. And I just feel it personally whenever I come back to the office and it's just, it, it fuels, it fuels, it gives you such a boost. It, 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 I can't describe it. So I clearly want to see the people. I want to collaborate. I want to ask people how they do, how they feel and, and actually have a person I think that's a very good point, because as opposed to having to force somebody to come to office, that would indicate that the company culture has an issue if somebody doesn't exactly. want to come to the office. Exactly. And I heard so many examples from companies out there when like, the, the first vaccines were out and they said, well, to us, everybody now back to office, home remote work is all over for us. And I mean, what sign is this to the employees? What experience is this? Didn't they trust us a year now? And now they say, we don't trust you anymore? Definitely. And I think this is where a lot of companies still need to, to rethink their whole, um, how they work and, and, and work scenarios. Can that be a new role uh, of architects as well, at least when they're on your uh, way, wavelength to not only be able to construct and design physical offices, but to design hybrid workspaces? Um, that's a very good question. Um, let's come back to, first I want to come back to the culture thing, we can start from there. There's a saying that goes that culture eats tactics for breakfast. If you, or strategy for breakfast, sorry. If, also if, tactics. Yeah, also tactics, <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause, um, and the funny thing is that what, what got us so far, I'm representing the analog world here a bit, so, uh, what, what got us as a, as a species so far is collaboration. Humans made it up to here, <laughs> up to the 22nd floor, <laughs> because they collaborated. And why did they collaborate? What's the basis of collaboration? Trust. And how do you trust each other? By communicating. And this is, if, if you ask what is the most important thing about sort of the office of the future, the office that builds or that um, supports this culture, it's enabling this communication. I think that's and such that's, a good point. And that's the, tri the tricky thing is now, back to your question, is how do you take that to the hybrid world? We're still working on that. Okay. <laughs> 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 because we, we're in a phase where at the moment we're in a transition phase. I mean, we, we all knew when we're all at home, Companies, especially office uh, furniture companies, released white papers, you know, by the thousands, telling you what the office of the future is going to be like. Now the same again. We are, you know, we're, we're long-term thinkers, <laughs> so we say, okay, this is a transition phase. Let's see how where the train's going. And uh, but it's it's really a good one. It's a tough one. Tough one for Dynatrace as well. Definitely a tough one too. And I think one of the biggest learning is um, you cannot have enough collaboration spaces, meeting rooms, smaller breakout rooms, and this will definitely bring the future too. So what do, you, what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize deep dive desks or kind of uh, collaboration zones where people can meet up? All, all over. We have think tanks where it's just rooms with whiteboards where you stand in and you scribble and this is where innovation this is really where innovation happens we have classical meeting rooms with a screen a big table we have bigger ones we have smaller ones but we have also and this is what we definitely need more of in the future um, those small rooms where as i said you go in with your computer and connect virtually with somebody but also those rooms where you like here in Vienna, in the Sundowner Lounge, we have those chairs, and every time I come here, those, those ear chairs, they are occupied, because people, two people sit together, discuss a topic, and this is again, it's just fueling innovation, always coming back to this topic again. And, I, and this is what my recommendation is, to not stop investing these pieces, um, these scenarios, and what will definitely be way more needed than the classic office desk in the future. 
you emphasize the importance of trust, and I totally relate to that. We are broadcasting very similar, um, same, so to say, principles. Can office, the way it's designed, um, kind of emphasize the trust? Can you see the trust in how the place is built? Is, can, can trust be felt? Can trust be seen? How did you do that? Did you do it's not just in terms of it's not just the finished office i mean in, in um, it's also in the process the way a company um, sort of transmits the information yeah. and spreads the information because obviously we're working in teams but not everybody can be on a team yeah so the, there are members of teams that represent the company and then and then you spread the word and I remember uh, the building we did in Linz, we, you had an all team meeting. It's a meeting where basically everybody comes together all over the world. And I wasn't aware. I was speaking, I was presenting the project, and they told me, people told me that I saw you on, on, like on TV, I saw you on the video. Yeah. I said, why? Because it was, it was broadcast to everybody, so they saw what we were doing together and why. And I could explain why. And it's, it, this is so important. Because if you know what's happening and why it's happening, yeah. Transparency. transparency. Trust comes from transparency. We're you have to mean it. You have to mean it. You have to mean it. You have to it. mean it. Dietmar, to close the, the round slowly, we're running out of time. Uh, first, um, almost la last question. How are you going to go about uh, designing hybrid office space at Erste Group, at Erste Digital? And then I'd ask you for your takeaways from this panel. So what's next for you? So we just moved into our new tower. The concept is uh, good enough and open that we can also adapt it. And I think you said the most important thing, learn and adapt. And that's the thing we will do as well. Nobody knows how the world will look, the working world will look like in half a year, in one year. And we will just have a closer look in it, ask all of the colleagues how they want to work in the future, learn and adapt. This is so interesting that you software guys, you digital guys, actually have it easier because that's your mentality when you build your digital products. You say, well, let's build a hypothesis and let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll adapt it. And the same thing you seem to be doing with your office spaces. Could, could I summarize it like that? Yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Is that the way totally to go? Great. Yeah. The design is not designing a finished fancy product. It's designing a system that enables. Mm. And the better the, the product, system, the path, better the... Sort of. and, and of course, yeah. if, if we do have a really, we, we do have a feedback culture, get the feedback from your people, look into it and try to adapt it or, or see how you can solve it. I think that's also one key to success. Perfect. It's almost seven. Is, do we have one or two questions for audience here or are you all just eager to have these wonderful drinks and food <laughs> that, that, that is here? So if we don't have a question, then let's close our round. And thank you so much for explaining and giving us all those insights on how you build this office. As it is still iterative process, I'll be happy to come again in half a year and see what's changed, what new learnings do you have, and we can make another round of learnings in the next past six months. We would love to welcome you back. <laughs> Perfect. And I'd welcome you back as well in our live stream in six months. Okay, let's make a deal. We'll come back to okay. Trace and see what kind of um, learnings they made. Have a good evening. Thank you for being with us, and let's party here on this really, really nice lab. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being with us, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.